Early voting ends this weekend in the two most closely watched elections in the country this year. Polls close Sunday evening in New Jersey and close Saturday in Virginia. The Virginia race between Democrat Terry McAuliffe and Republican Glenn Youngkin has been tight for months, and the two men are still effectively tied in the most recent polls. In New Jersey, incumbent Democratic Governor Phil Murphy has brought in major national figures, while Republican Jack Cettarelli has taken a more grassroots approach. We have coverage from both states. CBS News political reporter Adam Brewster is in Elizabeth, New Jersey for a Phil Murphy event. And Virginia Public Radio reporter Michael Pope is in Alexandria, Virginia. Michael, great to see you. Let's start with you. First of all, remind us why the Virginia gubernatorial race is getting so much national attention. Well, as you just pointed out, there's really only two statewide races this year, New Jersey and Virginia. So this is actually kind of a traditional thing for New Jersey and Virginia to sort of play this role of having this really unusual odd year election. And it's always seen as a kind of referendum on last year's election. So the, the Virginia election always follows a presidential election, usually zigzags. In other words, what Virginia usually ends up doing the opposite of what happened in the presidential year going all the way back to the 1970s with only one exception which is terry mcauliffe himself the first time he was elected in uh, for governor in 2013 broke that spell and of course democrats are hoping that he will be able to do that again that's so interesting now mcauliffe's team has gone to great lengths to link youngkin to former president trump youngkin has tried to keep his distance from the former president how have those tactics shaped the race yeah, for the Democrats, they want to make it all about Trump and sort of as the campaigns have, have been winding down and moving toward Election Day, you've seen Republicans really sort of wanting to focus all their attention on education and Democrats wanting to focus all their attention on Trump. Um, Trump does not poll well in Virginia. He lost Virginia last year by a, a huge margin. And so whenever Democrats can make it about Trump, they're, that's what they want to do. Um, and, you know, so there are actually Democrats who are really jazzed up about the fact that Trump himself will be doing a telephone town hall Monday night. Uh, now, actually, I, I caught up with the Yunkin campaign yesterday here in Old Town, Alexandria, and they, the Yunkin, Yunkin himself said that he will not be on that call. So, uh, actually, kind of an interesting scenario here. Here you got the former president campaigning in favor of Yunkin and the Republican ticket, and Yunkin having not wanting, having uh, wanting nothing to do with that. And so there is this sort of tension here that Yunkin has has tried to walk this tightrope throughout the whole campaign, of making sure the MAGA crowd is with him, but also not being so Trumpy that he alienates the suburban voters that he needs to win. So recent polls show Youngkin and McAuliffe in a statistical dead heat. Are the two sides surprised by how close this race is? Well, I would say this Halloween, Democrats are spooked by the poll numbers because uh, McAuliffe has been doing pretty well throughout this entire campaign. He's had a lead over Youngkin. Then at right at the end of the campaign, that lead dwindled to nothing. And now all of the recent polling uh, is that it's in a dead heat. The latest poll from the Washington Post and the Shar School at George Mason University has McAuliffe uh, at 49 percent and uh, has McAuliffe, excuse me, has uh, McAuliffe at 49 percent and Youngkin at 48 percent. So that's a one point lead. That's a virtual tie. Um, and it's important to remember the momentum here. So McAuliffe is coming out of a, a, a having a margin of victory, having a, a lead. His lead has dwindled to nothing. Youngkin has come from behind and uh, has been trailing the entire campaign. And now he's the momentum is with him. The excitement is with him. The movement of independent voters is in the Republican direction. We've seen uh, there's some geography to this as well. If you look at voters in the Richmond area, central Virginia, they were kind of for Youngkin before. Now they're really for Youngkin. So all the movement is in the Republican direction. Um, but that does not mean he's going to win. If you talk to Democrats, they will point to the last election for governor four years ago uh, when Ralph Northam won in the closing days of that campaign. It also looked like Ralph Northam was in trouble. He ended up winning with a pretty sizable 
uh, lead uh, in terms of the vote totals. And so Democrats are saying, oh, those, these are just sort of late election anxieties, and they feel like McAuliffe can win. Republicans feel very energized about what's going to happen Tuesday night. Now, regardless of who wins, should we expect calls for a recount or accusations of voter fraud? Well, there's already been talk of, on, of, about that, of course, um, and we've seen Republicans sort of laying the groundwork for challenging the elections. Um, I, you know, that was, keep in mind, in the California election that happened recently. So Virginia and New Jersey are usually the only states that have elections for governor in odd years. This year, of course, we had that sort of uh, interesting thing that happened in California. So we also have a California governor's race to look at this year. And there was a lot of expectation that that was going to happen in that California uh, election for governor, and it did not. So I think uh, if California is the model, the Republicans will accept the results of the election, and there won't be much of a challenge to what happened in terms of voting. Um, and I think Youngkin has said that he accepts the election results from 2020 here in Virginia. So, um, you know, it certainly is possible. We've seen a state senator already start to lay the groundwork for challenging the election. So uh, there are certainly are people out there that are already talking about that. A lot to watch there over the next several days. Michael Pope, thank you. Thank you. Now let's head to Adam Brewster in New Jersey now. Uh, Adam, great to see you. New Jersey hasn't re-elected a Democratic governor in 44 years. Does that history make the Murphy camp nervous? Well, it's certainly it's a trend that the Murphy campaign is hoping to break. Now, the governor and his team have been saying for months that they're running this race like they're 10 points behind. If you go back into the summer uh, or around the time of the primary uh, in June and late May, the governor had a 20-ish point lead in the polls, and more recent polls have shown that to be in the high single digits, low double digits. You know, Republicans insist this is a much tighter race when they look at their internal numbers. But the governor and his team have tried to say, you know, we're not taking this for granted. We know we have a bigger team. There are a million more Democrats than Republicans in terms of registered voters in New Jersey. But they know that they need their side to show up and vote. Uh, the Republican uh, voters have been very energized in this race. It's a matter of what some of those independent voters will do, sort of like what we're seeing in, in Virginia, and whether that can be enough to overcome the advantage that Democrats have from a registered voter standpoint in New Jersey. Uh, but certainly these off-year elections can lead to interesting trends. Uh, New Jersey is a solidly blue state in federal elections and when there are U.S. Senate seats uh, on the ballot or when the president is on the ballot. But in these off-year non-traditional you know, election cycle that New Jersey has, different things can happen, and it's a matter of which side tends to be more engaged. It was only just a few years ago you know, that Chris Christie, a Republican, was governor here for eight years. Now, there has been a lot of star power joining Murphy on the campaign trail. President Biden, former President Obama, Congressman Jim Clyburn, and Senator Amy Klobuchar, among others, have campaigned for him. Has that helped the incumbent? Well, he's certainly tried to use some of the big names to gin up that enthusiasm. Uh, he was speaking at an early uh, Get Out the Vote rally uh, just a short time ago that I was at uh, nearby. And he said, you know, I'd rather be playing the hand that we're dealt, but our side needs to show up to vote. Now, Senator Bernie Sanders was here the other night at the campus of Rutgers University. Of course, uh, Bernie Sanders, someone who's very popular uh, among young voters and college-age voters. As I was walking to the event that night, I was talking to a woman, uh, you know, who said that, you know, she loves Bernie Sanders. She, he is someone who got her engaged in politics. She loves everything that he stands for. She was saying, you know, I even get nervous when I talk about Bernie Sanders. And then, you know, after she finished that, I said, well, what do you think about Phil Murphy? And she said, well, he's okay. You know, I'll, pro I'll probably vote for him. I like that Bernie's here for him. So they're sort of trying to use those big names to gin up enthusiasm, make sure their side is engaged, showing up to these, you know, bigger sort of events that they've had as opposed to some of the retail events that Republican Jack Chiarelli has been holding. And he's been drawing, you know, decent crowds at those events when he has been going up and down the state for many, many months. So speaking of enthusiasm, has there been a big turnout for early in-person voting in New Jersey this year? Well, this is a new law in New Jersey this year. Mur Governor Murphy signed that uh, 
in the spring, there are nine days of early voting for a general election. And so it seems to be people are still catching on to it. Ryder University has been tracking the turnout. Uh, about 170,000 people voted early as of yesterday in person during that period. There's also vote by mail in New Jersey. About 450,000 people have voted by mail. So still about three times as many people voting by mail as voting early in person. It seems there are there's a sizable number of people who are waiting for Election Day. And both Murphy and Cittarelli have said in recent days this is something that will probably change as time passes. But for now, some of that sort of muscle memory of voting on Election Day or voting by mail something that people are more used to here in New Jersey that may be more popular for now and the early voting may pay off years and years down the line as people start to get used to the fact that that is an option available to them. But 170,000 people is no insignificant amount uh, who have voted early in person. What would a loss mean for either party? Well, certainly, the Republicans, if they win, that would be a, an upset that would send shockwaves around the country in Democratic circles. You know, I think that this has been seen as Governor Murphy's race to lose uh, for many months. So certainly there is more on the line for Democrats. You know, Governor Murphy holding on and winning, uh, you know, it will depend on what his margin looks like in terms of sort of the lessons Democrats take from this race and what Republicans take from this race. If it is a, you know, even a close loss for Republicans, there are probably lessons to be learned for other candidates who are going to be running in gubernatorial races in 2022 in, you know, states that are less blue than New Jersey, sort of some of the lessons that can be taken from this. A Republican was telling me last week, you know, that they're confident in the campaign uh, that Jack Tinarelli has put together, but they said there are lessons to be learned and issues that we focused on here that Republicans can take, even if we do lose closely, because no one was expecting us to even be in this race as recently as the summer, but the political climate has turned. Now, again, that's something that's worth thinking about as we talk about the 2022 midterms. Everyone's sort of looking at Virginia and, and, and still a bit at New Jersey in terms of what it may mean for 2022. These races are much closer than anyone thought they would be at the beginning of the year, much closer than people thought they would be in the summer. It, it is impossible to know what the political climate in the United States will be like a whole year from now, but certainly some interesting tea leaves that can be taken from these races. Uh, but in terms of a loss here, certainly if Democrats were to lose this race, that would have uh, send up red flags around the country for Democrats about how to approach their elections heading into 2022. Well, Adam Brewster, thanks for keeping a close eye on all of it and letting us know. Thanks, Elise.